Hey, thank you so much for joining us, YouTube, and we're so sorry we've been away for a bit. Those holidays were enjoyable, but of course, it's back to work and back to studying for Ronnie Wong. We're thrilled that you're here for our journey to CCIE series with Ronnie Wong. And in this episode, as promised, we're going to tackle something really important, and that is how to effectively efficiently and without breaking the bank, get some hands-on practice. All right, Ronnie, you know way more about this subject matter than me. I'm going to put you on the spot right now with my first question for you. All right. What is your favorite method of getting hands-on practice for your CCIE subjects? So, so far, what I've actually been using to help me to get started on some of the simpler topics and then, of course, move into more difficult topics is going to be GNS3. Uh, I really have been using this program since it was like version 0.9, so I'm very familiar with it and it really doesn't take me a lot to get things up and rolling. So that is by far my favorite one that I'm using. I love it. I, it's, like I, it's like I scripted that. I did not know what Ronnie was gonna say. I would have guessed GNS3, but I didn't know. And I love that response. So Ronnie, one of my biggest pet peeves is learning some kind of software so that I can practice. Right. I mean, I've got enough right. to worry about with the practicing of the technology. The last thing I want to have to learn is software to practice with. Right. And it sounds to me like, yeah, you're like, hey, I've been using GNS3 forever. I know it really well. It's not broken. I'm not going to fix it. Yeah, there's no now, doubt that this has been kind of the, the neatest thing, right, is I was able to take the skills I already had instead of having to put together a lot of different things, I was able to go right into it, especially with the new images that have been out with CML that can import right in. Uh, I was ready to go. Oh my gosh, that's so clever. That answered another question of mine. So, so you are a subscriber to CML, and one of the nice things that that gave you was the images that then you could go ahead and stick right into GNS3. Yeah. Now, I've seen some instructors out there now teaching CCIE level stuff, and I hear them making all kinds of statements about licensing and legality. I want to make it clear to everyone watching this video right now that we at IT Pro TV are not, <laughs> I repeat, we are not making statements about licensing or legality. If I was a betting man, by great coincidence I am, I would wager that we, Ronnie and I, when we take our images from CML and we put them into GNS3, that we are violating licensing. That'd be my bet. But the great news is, is that the odds that Cisco would even send us a nasty letter about this are slim to none. They don't care that Ronnie and I bought their wonderful product at $200 a year and they, you know, and then we kind of took a little right turn with that and got that going in GNS3. What their concern would be is if we stole those images of CML, certainly, what their concern would be if we started a business CCIE training based on those images and we were serving, you know, those are the kinds of things that get you in trouble. Cisco's always been really swell when it comes to allowing us to do even GNS3 itself. Look at that with images that we have not licensed in any way, shape or form. But I did want to make the point that we're never advising you on legalities and licensing and all that. We wouldn't be that silly because we'd never want to give you misinformation and then have you get in trouble. Now, Ronnie, I'm so old that when I was studying for my CCIE, I had to get a legal pad and I would draw the topology 
and then I would write on the legal pad all of the CLI configuration to make that work mm -hmm. because there was no such thing as GNS3. There was no such thing as CML. There was no such thing as rack rentals. And that's another option, renting gear from someone. And then all of those things came along. Ronnie, could you imagine yourself using packet tracer if you wanted to practice, let's say, basic OSPF? Yes, I could see that, but at the OSPF level, you've got to remember that with inside of packet tracer, there are some of those outputs that you're going to see that are canned outputs. And that means they're not really doing anything except showing you what is possibly supposed to be the, the end result. So you got to be very careful. I love it. Mm -hmm. I love it. Yeah, we had our answer with the long pause, right? He's like, oh gosh. You, yeah. you, you know, we don't want to bash Packet Tracer, yeah. right? But I, I completely agree with you. Like, I have Packet Tracer installed on every single machine I own, and it's always right there at my fingertips. And the advantage is it runs beautifully on anything and requires very little resources. But at the CCIE level, it gets a little scary for what Roddy was just talking about, where maybe something's not working and you're like, wait a minute, is it my config? Or did the engineers not get this completely right? Remember, Packet Tracer is a simulator and GNS3 and CML and uh, EVENG. EVENG is roughly the equivalent of GNS3. It is an emulator. Those are the actual operating systems that you're running as VMs. So you are much less in the scenario of, geez, is this not working because the hands-on practice platform is broken. Right. Ronnie, have you have you rented racks yet? We ha I have done some rack rentals now, not for CCIE, but actually when I did my first uh, my uh, I shouldn't say my first a previous edition of the CCNP on the route switch and T shoot, I rented those to help us out when we were actually doing shows with them. So I am familiar that the advantage of those rack rentals a lot of times is that you might also find study guides that they put along with. In other words, actually built up lab guides that can be really helpful if you're not sure of how to set everything up. Uh, so it can help to walk you through very complex scenarios and that way you just get faster and faster with those rack rentals. So they can be very helpful. I love it. And you know, why I bring up rack rentals, Ronnie, is because like DNA Center, uh, you know, the SD-WAN, a lot of these technologies, they're not even G or GNS3 friendly yet, or it's such a nightmare to get them working in there that, you know, s students will say oftentimes, okay, let me just find this gear for rental. Now, Ronnie, let's clear up another question we get all the time about hands-on practice for the CCIE infrastructure. Uh, actually, remember, we're doing enterprise infrastructure here. So this discussion is constrained to that track. But what I wanted to clear up for everyone, Ronnie, was this whole like D cloud and, and uh, uh, DevNet. Mm -hmm. So I know you've used both of those, Ronnie. The way I see this, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but what I see about this is D cloud is incredibly cool to get a lab guide from them for free and then step through a demo, but you're not configuring anything with dCloud. And then DevNet I love because you can get a sandbox and configure things, but the configurations are limited and they're typically AP only. Wow. So that's been my experience. Yeah, with DevNet, your, your limitation a lot of times is the reservation and the time constraint that you have with those devices. In dCloud, it's the same way. So you always have to reserve those things to make sure that they're done. But then inside dCloud, because they're structured for a specific purpose for you to learn, uh, you're only going to get that one step to go through. So you'll see that it's very limiting to what you're actually doing, but it can at least get you familiar with some of the technology. 
Yeah, I, I, you turned me on to DCloud, and I was like, initially, I'm like, huh. And then, of course, I realized, oh, wait, wait, wait a minute here. You know, this is really pretty neat. And, and I discovered those lab guides that, and I shouldn't call them lab guides, they're like demo guides. And what I've really enjoyed about those, Ronnie, is, is it's almost like an intro, uh, it's, it's, it's a hands-on introduction to the tech. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, you know, you hear about like Stealth Watch and right. you're like, oh my gosh, what is Cisco Stealth Watch? Well, what a great way to get an education on it, to read their demo guide and actually click through it. It's an incredibly rich, rewarding way to get introduced to the technology. Yeah, it's really designed for that pre-sales engineer perspective as well to help you to be able to answer those questions. So you'll actually get in there and actually figure out how to show certain things that you weren't sure how to do. Yeah. Well, you know, Ronnie, I can never talk about hands-on and CCIE without telling a quick story. When I was doing this, I was using legal pads, like I described, and, and then rack rentals came along and I started renting racks and I was spending like a thousand dollars a week oh. on rack rentals. And a guy came up to me at Cisco Live named Jerry Hubert. He was with Fluke Networks at the time. Don't know if he's still there, but this guy, Jerry, came up to me and he was like, he said, I know your voice. Who, who are you? And I said, I immediately changed my voice. I'm Anthony. No, I said, uh, I'm Anthony Sequeira. I teach, you know, CCNP. And he was like, oh my gosh, you're Anthony. And, and he said, I've been been wanting to talk to you. And he said, I have a full CCIE rack in my basement. I'm going to email you credentials. There you go. Nice. Yeah. I was like, oh my God. He's like, yeah, I passed. I left it set up. It's yours. So why I bring this story up is number one, I always am thankful to him and, and want to give him a shout out. But number two, it brings up the point of you know, when you subscribe to something like IT Pro TV, you are part of a community. There is a forum, there is, you know, all this community built around this. And one of the things I've loved seeing is our members helping members. And that is a really important step because the CCIE journey is lonely enough. Uh, and, you know, it's nice to have friends that are in a similar pursuit. Well, Ronnie, is there anything that that we should bring up about hands-on practice? I mean, we can certainly get into this again in future episodes, but but anything you think we're kind of leaving out of this discussion? I we've mentioned, I do believe every product that's that's relevant. <laughs> yeah, uh, if anything, right? Uh, if you do have lab guys that you are really comfortable with, make sure you go through those things and then be able from that point to use it as a sandbox environment. But overall though, whatever tool that you're actually with, you're gonna actually have to spend some time getting to learn them, no matter which one it is, especially if you don't have any familiarity with it. So realize you have to add in some padded time to help you uh, to really get used to that program. Yeah, and you know, have a friend like Ronnie Wong. <laughs> uh, a quick shout out to Ronnie. So I felt pretty good with GNS3 and then CML came along and I, I, you know, called Ronnie on a Saturday and was just like, what in, how do you set this up? What is happening? And Ronnie's like, I can walk you through it in 20 minutes on Monday. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I, I love it. And, and something, uh, you know, something else, by the way, that we didn't mention, uh, just kind of to wrap up here, there are people still doing this. Mm -hmm. Let's not forget another option. And that is you get on eBay and you buy a bunch of throwaway devices that are inexpensive, that run the same code. They're certainly typically not the same like 3750 that you're going to encounter because you don't need that. You get a less expensive switch that runs comparable code and you build a rack of equipment in your house. So, I mean, that's an option mm -hmm. too. Well, we are sure glad that you joined us for this episode of Journey to CCIE with Ronnie Wong and myself, Anthony Sequera. We've got more episodes on the way for you. In fact, by your request, we're going to be demonstrating, showing you, and talking about our favorite books that have made big differences for us 
as we go through these journeys. So join us for that episode coming up and a lot more episodes after that. Uh, and also, don't forget, consider subscribing to the IT Pro TV channel and use that little bell so that when we do create a new episode for you, you are notified about it. On behalf of Ronnie Wong, myself, Anthony Sequera, and everyone here at IT Pro TV, even the non-CCIEs, thank you so much for joining us, and we can't wait to see you in the next episode.